Today we would like to make a, a very important request for support from the sailing community and potential catamaran buyers who are considering purchasing a leopard catamaran. We think things should be fair and truthful. That if mistakes are made, so is an apology. With the good feeling of making things right and trying to grow. Many people are very frustrated that Robertson and Kane build these boats, but it's left to the public face of the Leopard Catamaran's broker, Travelopia and the sales office to deal with the storm of bad publicity. Since arriving in Trinidad, Travelopia have organized 100% of our repairs to make our boats safe and seaworthy, slowly restoring confidence in our home. Trent asked a Travelopia employee during one of his many meetings what percentage of the repair costs were being covered by Robertson and Kane and Travelopia and how this all worked. Stop it, Alicia. These are private phone conversations. Don't reveal all my information. I'll do what I want because it's in a public space. Did you say that you're not going to feed me dinner? I told you that I would hit you over the head with a hammer if you didn't allow me to film this video and cause you grievous bodily harm. He was told that the rectification costs would be split 50-50 between the builder, Robertson and Kane, and the broker, Travelopia. We find this totally unacceptable and we think the sailing community should find this unacceptable as well. Although we did verbally agree during one of the initial meetings in Trinidad between us, Robertson and Kane, and Travelopia, that Travelopia would take the lead in organising the repairs. This should not absolve the shipbuilder of covering all of the basic costs to fix the mess they made. For clarity, we denied Robertson and Kane taking the lead on repairing the hull. Due to Robertson and Kane's track record with the speed and quality of repairs done on our hull, along with possible conflict of interest in the depth of the investigation of the hull and their staff retracting permission to film. <laughs> Cut it off. Play that clip. Alright. Right here, we have over 150,000 US dollars worth of cost just from the yard alone. It's insane. We'd like to thank Travelopia Leopard Catamarans for covering this and reducing our stress, but maybe Robertson and Kane could do the same for them. In our opinion, Travelopia is clearly attempting to rectify our situation, which is above and beyond the sheer quantity of warranty issues that any reasonable person would expect on a new catamaran. We believe that Robertson and Kane the builder of Liga should reimburse their proactive and caring sole brokerage 100% of the cost that it took to fix our yacht. If the intention is only to cover half of the costs, we think Robertson and Kane should issue a statement declaring their intention to reimburse Travelopia 100% of the costs in this case to show that they take this situation seriously. This is something that hasn't sat right with me for quite a while and I've been dwelling on it and it's the case of if a shipbuilder manages hypothetically because nobody's got the contract in their hand but I mean I'm sure they could issue a statement to the effect one way or another or what it actually amounts to whether they cover 50%, 60%, 20% in reality to reimburse the broker on what their contractual obligations actually are. Because let's just say hypothetically their contractual ob obligations are 50%. Any new yacht buyer should be, should just not accept that because essentially you're accepting the logic that the shipbuilder is only on the hook for 50% of their stuff ups, 50% of their work quality. If they're gonna come back maybe with a statement and say, oh, well, if warranties are legitimate and um, when filed correctly and as per blah, 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 they're fully reimbursed. Let's look at our case then. And uh, 
issue a statement that all our warranties will be covered and all of our issues will be covered and make that statement out loud, prove that they stand behind the product 100%. We believe that this will begin to restore some confidence in them as a shipbuilder and show that they fully recognise and take responsibility for the poor workmanship and build quality issues on our boat. That they respect the work and time and length that Travelopia has gone to at their cost for the past couple of years to rectify the issues across multiple hulls that Robertson and Kane ultimately caused during construction. If Robertson and Kane won't pay for the total rectification of the poor build quality on our boat, why should the cruising community even believe that they care about their mistakes? Why should people believe that they intend to build completely safe blue water cruising boats in future if they think they can get away with only covering 50% of their mistakes. We believe that ignoring half of the responsibility means that they only take this warranty. Wait, how can you expect Robertson and Kane to build good boats when you can't even build good signs? We believe that ignoring half of the responsibility means they're only taking this half as seriously as they should be. And how else are consumers supposed to be that? We won't, in this case, ask them to publicly admit to any of the things that they've done to us, but we are sure that they are happy to declare that they fully intend to reimburse their broker, who in our case had misplaced faith in their ability to build a strong and reliable catamaran. Travelopia didn't build the boat. They may have felt pressured into signing a renewed contract with Robertson and Kane, to continue to service their charter needs with an agreement to split the cost 50-50. But is this the right attitude and approach to building liveaboard cruisers' homes? Robertson and Kane, we challenge you to restore some South African pride to your shipbuilding and reimburse the out-of-pocket expenses of Leopard Catamaran's brokerage for the warranty repairs of this vessel. We ask all of our viewers to share this video far and wide, leave a comment and send an email to show that liveaboard cruisers do not believe that making 100% of the mistakes means you're only 50% responsible for the consequences. Robertson and Kane now have a chance to make a statement and show that they stand behind their product, not just for liveaboard cruisers, but also for their loyal business partner who has helped make their brand what it is today. We look forward to their response. And with public acceptance of financial responsibility to their broker, we believe that they will be proving that they care more about each hull they produce. Above and beyond, all proceeds this warranty series could possibly receive has been donated in advance to $10,000 by Trent. So naturally, there's people out there who would say, this is for attention, this is for personal gain, this is for something that their little brain has thought of. Now, I donated said money in advance to cover any possible insignificant income that would come from this video series. And what would you estimate that it's out at the moment from the warranty stuff that you guys are putting together? And this is my way of covering them from being accused of this being about anything other than what it's about, which is building better boats and not fucking with people's lives. That's what this is about. Build better boats, don't fuck with people. That's it. And, re and, and rectify your stuff ups as part of that. that. That is all that this is about. And when you cause a problem, fix it and it gets fixed in the right way. So what would you estimate uh, has been earned by these warranty videos to the nearest hundred dollars? Two hundred dollars? Two hundred US dollars. So I've, so I've donated ten thousand US dollars to a very, very worthy charity. Travelopia has put in, put in a lot of work and effort to rectify this boat. 
I understand giving them a blank check at the beginning to do so, knowing that Robertson and Kane would ultimately cover the blank check wouldn't really be fair and reasonable. So now is the appropriate time to raise this issue. There are good people who work for these companies, but at the end of the day, they are companies. They are not small family owned businesses in a local community. They're owned by international investment funds. The only consequence these kinds of businesses understand is money. And with Robertson and Kane only being responsible for a percentage of rectification costs, not the entire thing, that consequence comes down. Money and how much money things cost them is in many instances on the corporate balance sheet the only way to make them care. Yeah, that is the only way. And that's what people need to remember. That when we say Robertson and Kane, this company is not owned by Robertson or Kane. It is owned by a Czech investment fund. Leopard Catamaran's brokerage, if you own a Leopard, it is not your friendly broker who you happen to like. It is owned by a European investment fund. So when you're talking about how things need to be handled and the point Trent's trying to make in this video about responsibility of costs, that is the only thing that means something at the end of the day to them, is their profitability, how much mistakes cost them, and whether it is more cost effective to solve the mistakes before the, it's the consumer's problem on the production or at line. the end. Yeah. Exactly. If it's cheaper for them to just hypothetically get owners to deal with their windows once they have their boat rather than work on improving the products and procedures at the factory side, then that's what they're going to do. And the consumer loses out because the balance sheet is better that way. And these brokers that are telling people different stories about our situation, um, well, they're probably presuming in the end something will be signed before it gets too serious, which is a possible assumption. But if it doesn't, I mean, there is a fundamental difference between building a liveaboard owner's boat that crosses oceans and building a boat that is going to go into a charter fleet and have possibly five years of servicing and rectification and testing, if you like, before it's finally sold off to somebody for some other purpose. So everything we address relates to the idea of producing liveaboard owners' boats. I mean, there is an argument to say if it's got a category rating and everything else, they should all be made to the same standard. But I'm not particularly fussed about charter boats because they will get abused and anyone that's ever seen them or been on them knows that. And they have quite a few years at the charter base to be able to be fixed, rectified, issues to be ironed out and then go through a kind of transition process to whoever buys it where it will where it should get surveyed again. We're referring to them selling directly to families and directly to owners who then potentially sail them straight out of Cape Town across potentially dangerous oceans to a new location and suffer in ways like we have. And you can't have you can't have issues priced into a, a profit margin and priced into a rectification margin. These boats need to be 100%. I don't really care about charter boats. I don't really care about boats that are going to be in a low risk environment for the people on board. But this is an issue that needs to be considered for people crossing oceans. Stress isn't good for you. I mean, what we went through, we've not even fully covered in detail, myself and Tanin. And it could have been a lot worse. And had we been less capable and intelligent, it would have been a lot worse if we weren't able to solve problems on the fly and gone over extensive literature to have a lot of spares and emergency repair stuff on board. If we had have just 
had the bare minimum on board as far as being able to fix the boat on that initial crossing. This could have been far, far worse. Like if we didn't have flex tape to hold the window on, for instance, and, and someone had to go outside and hang off the boat and potentially screw the window back on. Far, far worse and more dangerous. The fact that we could reach over, change direction of the boat, reach over, protect one side, and one person push on the window while the other person applied emergency tape, which we had in a big roll um, to hold the window on. We're very fortunate. Well, we're not fortunate, it was good planning. So that was good planning. This is Tanin. He lives on this boat. And he's not been eating very well lately. He's been working very hard for nothing. He's been paid for none of his 300 and something hours of work in the heat in the tropics. Getting bitten by so many blood bugs, he's needed a blood transfusion, which he couldn't afford. So his body's just eating his muscle. It's uh, cannibalizing him. Slowly. So despite it only being a verbal conversation, the travel OPR would look at the warranty rectification hours of poor emaciated young Tannen. And some people saying we're silly to work on our own home so we could get out of here faster as opposed to suffering more and sitting here and in things not being fixed. Tynan would like to be paid for fixing this new product that he had faith in. But I mean, it's totally optional and up to them. But if he dies, they will live stream it. <laughs>